For PC builders in general, and especially first time PC builders, the whole process of picking out the exact right components that will fit your needs for your new computer can often be a daunting task. Consoles are typically a fairly straightforward process. You select what generation of console you want. In most cases, especially like this time period during a cycle, you're gonna want the most recent console. Then you decide whether you want a new one or a used one, and whichever one you want, you just go out and find the cheapest option and select that. Unlike consoles, PCs are much more complex with various different platforms to choose from, as well as the new and used market, as well as on top of all that, just having to put together uh, several different components instead of just buying the whole thing as a finished unit. Now obviously pre-built gaming PCs are available, however you typically pay a little bit of a premium to have somebody else build it for you, so it's usually going to save you a little bit of money at least, and if you use the used market effectively, it can even save you a lot of money by building your own. So today I want to talk about building a computer from largely used parts and give you a few tips and starting points that make the task a little bit easier. Like any other major purchasing decision in your life, whether it be a car, a home, a TV, or other types of electronics, first thing you want to do is to figure out what your budget is. And it doesn't always have to be just a fixed price point budget. It can be a range. The next part is to pick out components that you actually do want to purchase new. Now, a couple starting points for that that I may recommend are things like power supplies and storage. Now obviously you can go the used route with both power supplies and storage. I just like to buy new power supplies because I know they come with a manufacturer warranty and they're good for several years. And I always like to buy new hard drives especially because you never know how well an old hard drive has been handled, if it was fastened correctly in a case or if it was allowed to rattle around or if it had been dropped down the stairs, you really just don't know. And because there's a lot of small, very fast moving parts in a hard drive, a lot of those jarring sort of hits a hard drive takes can actually damage it quite a bit. However, if you're going the solid state route, those tend to be a little bit safer. You can sort of bang those around a little bit more because there's no moving parts. They are a little bit harder to damage. So if you're going that route, that's probably good to just buy a used one. The next part is the most daunting part, and that is the research part. And especially if you are a new builder and researching computer building in general, this is where you are likely to get overwhelmed. A really good YouTube resource is Random Gaming in HD. It's a YouTube channel that specializes in using old hardware and benchmarking that and trying to run as up-to-date games as possible on that used and largely cheaper hardware. But your best bet may be to check out other forums, uh, places like Tom's Hardware, which specializes in computer computer hardware. Linus Tech Tips has a forum which is very active as well as Reddit is always a good go-to for figuring out just what type of build you want. Uh, a lot of times it may just be easier to ask in a forum, hey, what should I try to build with this being my budget on a used platform using things like eBay and Craigslist? And uh, then people will give you responses and tell you about what type of hardware you should be looking at. And typically I'll add that the community tends to do a pretty good job of helping each other out with those types of tasks. And for the new parts, I would shop around with the usual suspects, places like Amazon.com, Newegg, and uh, Micro Center are all really good resources. Also places like Fry's Electronics and Best Buy do have uh, price match guarantees with online shopping, including Amazon and Newegg. So if you find a part that happens to be available at a local retailer, you may just wanna bring your phone in uh, with the Amazon page pulled up so that you can price match that and just get it locally and not have to worry about shipping charges that may apply. Then when you get to the actual buying of the used parts, a lot of times it feels like you're on your own episode of Scrapyard Wars uh, from the Alliance Tech Tips channel. And by the way, if you've never seen Scrapyard Wars, I'll just leave a link in the description for uh, the last season that just came out for you to watch because it's, it's a pretty great show. But in the show, a lot of times it shows the contestants going to uh, local electronics recyclers or electronics type dumps. Uh, and that's not always available to everyone. Maybe you live in a smaller community that's not around a large city where those types of places are readily available. So unless you have those recycling centers readily available to you, you're gonna really be stuck with things like eBay, Craigslist, Facebook now has a marketplace for things uh, that you may be able to find components on, or of course you may get lucky and find uh, garage sales that may lead you to a couple components here and there. 
The biggest thing with buying used components, aside from staying in your own price range, is to compartmentalize the actual computer build. The place I would start with is the platform that you're gonna build on, and I would start with the actual processor. The reason being is motherboards tend to stay within a tighter uh, range of prices anyways, but CPUs can range from very, very cheap from like $30 all the way up to even used ones can be a few hundred dollars. So I would pick your platform based on the processor that you can find the best deal on and then find a matching motherboard to go with it. And then of course, once you actually have your motherboard in hand and you know your platform, you can go ahead and buy your RAM, which will likely be either DDR3, if it's a slightly older generation, or if it's more of a current generation processor, it'll be a DDR4 system. Also, once you have your motherboard in hand, you will know the form factor of your motherboard. And at that point, you can make a case decision whether you want to buy a case that is a micro ATX, mini ITX maybe, or just your standard ATX uh, case but you can't really buy a micro ATX case if you end up with an ATX motherboard. So start with the motherboard and then buy a case that's appropriate for the size. And then of course there's the graphics card and that's a big chunk of your budget should be allotted if it's a gaming PC anyways, should be allotted towards the graphics card because that's the single component that will have the biggest impact on your gaming. Again, research is key with buying graphics cards. For example, at the time of recording this video, you probably want to avoid AMD's cards just because the whole mining craze for cryptocurrency has driven those prices through the roof. But aside from that type of research, the decision for buying the graphics card is largely independent of the other components because it will basically fit in any system that you select so long as the form factor of the case and the motherboard are pretty standardized. After you've picked out your graphics card, that's when you can buy your power supply. Now, if you're buying a new power supply, you may actually want to wait until after the graphics card has been purchased to go ahead and get the power supply. And the main reason for that is not all power supplies come with all the correct connectors for uh, various graphics cards. For example, if your graphics card takes two um, additional power plugs aside from the motherboard connector, then you may need to look for a higher wattage power supply or at least a power supply that has those plugs included. And the only other real component to consider is your storage, but unless you're going the mini ITX route in an extremely small form factor computer, then really any storage is gonna work with virtually any PC. Just make sure it's a SATA connection if you're going the hard drive SSD route and not something sort of obscure like an enterprise uh, hard drive that may use a SAS connection instead. But that's basically my tips for starting and building a used PC. I have done it several times. You can always buy pre-built PCs, just buy them used. That's sometimes a good route to take and then upgrade them with a graphics card down the road. Again, Random Gaming in HD is a great YouTube channel that also does that type of thing where they take a pre-built system and then uh, add graphics cards to make it more of a gaming type system. If you're more interested in going that route, that channel would probably be your best bet for research. But I wanna know down in the comments below if you've ever built a used system from used components that are just pieced together and tell me how that worked out for you. Let me know in the comments down below. But that's all for me guys. If you like this video, give me a like, share, subscribe down below. Those things help me out a lot. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. They are the same tag for your convenience. And as always, we'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware and I'll see you guys in the next video.